Chapter 4 In this chapter you will learn how to keep from cross-contaminating foods, how to cook foods safely, the safe way to thaw frozen foods and chill hot foods, how to keep foods at the right temperature, hot or cold, the importance of maintaining proper food temperature to control illness-causing germs, respect for the temperature danger zone, the different kinds of thermometers, how to measure temperature and how often, the right way and the wrong way to handle place settings and utensils. Working in the danger zone. There's no way to avoid it. All food, in order to be prepared, cooked and served, must enter that temperature range between 41 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit, where illness-causing bacteria can grow. As said before, this temperature range is known as the danger zone. The time limit for food in the danger zone is four hours. After four hours, the food must be thrown out. As a food handler, your job is to practice safe food handling, monitor the time spent in the danger zone, prevent cross-contamination from other sources, minimize the time food must spend in the danger zone, start with utensils and surfaces that have been cleaned and sanitized, and when you're done using them, clean and sanitize them again. Prepare foods in small amounts, called batch cooking. This is only as much as you can use in four hours or less. Measure and record food temperatures continually. Prepare food as close as you can to the time it's served, and if you're working ahead, store it properly. Use utensils to avoid touching raw food whenever possible. Wash your hands after each task, especially when you've been working with raw meat of any kind, taking out the garbage, cleaning, etc. After food has been prepared for service, avoid touching it. Again, the time limit for food in the danger zone is four hours. After that, throw it out. Thawing food safely. There are a few different methods when it comes to thawing frozen foods. First is the cooking method. The cooking method only works with small foods, such as meat patties or seafood. The food must be small enough to go straight into cooking while still frozen. Other foods have to be thawed. The second method is the slow thawing method. For this method, place the tightly wrapped frozen item, such as a roast, on the lowest rack of the refrigerator. You have to leave room around it for the air to circulate. Depending on the size, slow thawing may take up to three days. The third method is the microwave thawing method. Thaw food in the microwave oven, only if it will then be cooked immediately. The fourth method is the quick thawing method. In a food prep sink, place the food in a large enough container and fill it with cold running water for no more than two hours. Afterward, clean and sanitize the container, sink, and anything else the thawing water may have touched. One important thing to remember is never thaw foods on the counter at room temperature, because that would be the danger zone. Food safety, a matter of degrees. Three of the most important jobs in any kitchen are maintaining food temperature, measuring food temperature, and recording food temperature. These are not just the cook's job, they're everyone's. Thermometers are used constantly in restaurants to measure, whether foods at delivery are acceptable. Internal temperatures during cooking, especially meats. Reheating, cooling, foods in hot and cold holding. Food handlers must keep track of how long food stays in the danger zone, which is between 41 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures should be monitored on a constant basis. Always check with your certified professional food manager for intervals and proper procedures. If prepared or perishable food stays in the danger zone for longer than four hours, throw it out. That goes for meats, vegetables, eggs, dairy, beans and rice, or food containing these ingredients. Cooking or reheating foods that have been in the danger zone for more than four hours will not make them safe again. The right tool for the job. There are various types of thermometers. These are some of the types you will most likely be using. There is the bimetallic stemmed thermometer. This is a probe thermometer that is used to measure internal temperatures of food. Insert the lower third of its pointed metal stem into the food and read the circular gauge at the top. This thermometer should never be left in food that is cooking in an oven, microwave, or on a stove. Also note that bimetallic stemmed thermometers are slower than probe type thermometers and report an average temperature range instead of a more accurate temperature reported at the tip. Therefore, health inspectors generally push for probe type thermometer usage. To calibrate a bimetallic stemmed thermometer, place the measuring tip in a clean container of half ice, half slushy water, making sure that the tip doesn't touch the bottom or edge of the container. 
30 seconds after the gauge needle stops moving, turn the calibration nut, located just below the gauge, until the needle reads 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This method also works for thermocouples and digital thermometers as well. If they require adjustment, try replacing the battery. If that doesn't work, send it to an authorized repair service. Then there is the thermocouple. This thermometer measures temperature electronically by inserting its probe into the food and reading its digital display. Probe thermometers must be small tipped. There is also the time temperature indicator. It looks like a label on a food package. This thermometer contains liquid crystals that change color if it reaches an unsafe temperature, indicating whether the food has been in the danger zone. There is also the digital thermometer, which measures temperatures by inserting the pointed metal tip into the food and reading the digital display on the handle. There are also food-specific thermometers. You would use this device to measure just one type of food, such as meat, deep-fried foods, or candy, and no other. Another type are equipment thermometers. These thermometers measure temperatures in ovens, refrigeration equipment, holding carts, and other cooking, storage, or serving equipment. Place refrigerator thermometers in a place where they are easy to read. One thing to remember is never use a mercury-based thermometer or a glass thermometer to measure foods. They could break and contaminate what you're measuring. The state recommends daily calibration of thermometers, especially probe thermometers, if they've been bumped or dropped, to make sure you're getting an accurate reading. And they must be cleaned and sanitized after each use. Before and after each use, thermometers must be washed, rinsed, and air-dried. Use a food-safe sanitizing solution on the contact areas before putting the thermometer away. Probe thermometers are used to measure the internal temperature of food. For all measurements, let the needle or readout stabilize about 15 seconds before recording the temperature. Avoid touching the sensor probe against the container sides or bottom, which may be warmer than the food and give a false reading. Use these methods to get an accurate temperature from different foods. Foods while cooking, insert the sensor device into the center of the food, the thickest part of the roast, for example, or the middle of a stovetop pot. Take a measurement in at least two places. Make sure the stem of the thermometer doesn't touch bone, which can give the wrong temperature. Small liquid containers. Open one container, a half pint of cream, say, in the batch, and insert your thermometer. If the contents of that container can't be used immediately, throw it away. Soft, flexible, bulk containers. Fold the container back on itself with the thermometer nestled in the fold, taking care not to penetrate the material. Frozen packages. Stack two frozen packages with the thermometer placed in between. Your kitchen maintains a temperature logging system for tracking foods in the danger zone. Use it to record the temperature of food, the time that temperature was taken, anything unusual, for instance, if chilled foods rise to above 41 degrees Fahrenheit. After logging it, inform your manager promptly. Proper cooking is especially important for meats, which often naturally contain microorganisms that can cause illness. Poultry especially is never served undercooked. Follow these guidelines to kill illness-causing germs, adding 25 degrees Fahrenheit if you're cooking in a microwave. The following times and temperatures reflect what the internal temperature must reach for that specified minimum time in order to properly kill bacteria in those foods. Beef roasts, 145 degrees for three minutes. 140 degrees for 12 minutes, 130 degrees for 121 minutes. Pork, game, minced meat and fish, and eggs in large batches. 155 degrees for 15 seconds, 150 degrees for one minute, 145 degrees for three minutes. Ground meats, non-poultry, and casseroles with meat. 155 degrees for 15 seconds. Lamb, mutton, veal, fish, seafood, cubed or sliced beef, eggs served promptly, and steaks, 145 degrees for 15 seconds. Poultry, stuffed meats, and stuffed pastas, 165 degrees for 15 seconds. Food sometimes is served or stored in hot holding or cold holding stations, equipment that is designed to control temperature. When working with these holding stations, bring food to the holding station in a covered container. Use long-handled utensils instead of your hands to stir or move food. Utensils should be kept in the food, handle pointing away from the food when not in use, or else placed in a container with drinkable running water. 
Keep containers covered whenever possible, stir the food frequently to maintain even temperature and to avoid hot or cold spots. Measure food temperatures by looking at the thermometer placed in the food, not just by reading the holding station's thermostat. One thing to remember is do not mix new food with old. Instead, remove the container holding the old food and replace it with the container holding the new food. For cold holding, do not let food stand at room temperature because that will allow germs to grow. Store foods in a refrigerator, refrigerated display case, in ice, or other approved methods. Always hold cold foods at 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Fish, shellfish, poultry, milk, and red meat will stay longer if you cold hold them at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Use the metal stem thermometer to check the food in cold holding. For example, in salad bars, areas where you prepare food, and in coolers. If you use ice to keep food cold on a salad bar or food display, be sure that the ice comes up to the level of the food that is in the pan or the dish. Food must be colder than 41 degrees Fahrenheit when you put it in the ice. Cold food is held at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower to keep germs from growing. It should be measured for temperature using a probe thermometer at least every four hours. Ice surrounding food should be level with the food to maintain the correct cold temperature. Make sure that the holding unit's lighting is far enough away from the food to keep it from heating it. For holding hot food, preheat hot holding stations, steam tables, soup warmers, crock pots, and other heated surfaces before placing food. Hot food is kept at 135 degrees Fahrenheit or higher and should be measured for temperature in more than one place using a metal stemmed thermometer at least every two hours to make sure it stays at the correct temperature throughout your shift. After placing food on a steam table, stir regularly to avoid cold spots. Again, do not mix new food with old food, and also do not mix raw food with cooked food. Hot food that can't be served within four hours should be cooled and placed in refrigerated storage. State law requires that foods be chilled from 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours, and then dropped from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within four hours. In other words, hot foods must pass through the danger zone within a total of six hours. If food does not cool to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within six hours, don't save it, throw it out. Foods that cool properly and are ready for refrigeration should be labeled listing the contents as well as the date and time prepared. To speed up the cooling process, cut it up. Cut foods such as meats into smaller portions no larger than 4 pounds and then place in the refrigerator. Use shallow pans. Pour foods into pre-chilled pans to a depth of 1 inch for soft, thick foods such as sauces and stews and 3 inches for thin or liquid foods. Place the pans in the top rack of the refrigerator, stirring regularly until chilled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder, and then cover. Use ice water baths. Chill pots of hot food such as soup by placing the pot in a large container and surrounding the pot with ice. Stir the food frequently so that it chills evenly to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. Use a blast chiller. Place the pan of food in the blast chiller if your workplace has one. Once food has cooled, move it to a larger covered storage container. An important thing to remember is never place a large pot of hot food in the refrigerator. It will raise the temperature inside the fridge into the danger zone, and the food in the pot will not cool quickly enough, allowing large amounts of bacteria to grow. Food that is cooked and then cooled may need to be heated again. When you must reheat food, do it very quickly, within one hour, to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The right way to do this is on the stove burners, or in microwave ovens, convection ovens, or double boilers. Do not use anything that will heat the food slowly, because it takes too long to pass through the danger zone. Stir the food to be sure that all parts of it are hot. Then use your metal stem thermometer to check the temperature. Reheat foods to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Reheat food only once, using the stovetop, grill, or oven. Never the hot holding equipment, which cannot reheat food effectively enough to kill microorganisms. The reheated food should reach a temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of at least 15 seconds. Do not mix reheated food with fresh food. If food cannot be reheated within two hours, throw it out. Check the temperature of reheated food with a metal stem thermometer before serving. Self-service areas. Self-service areas are areas such as salad bars and condiment bars. There are special considerations that must be taken into account with self-service areas. To avoid cross-contamination, take used plates from customers coming back for seconds and give them clean plates instead. The only items that can be reused in a self-serve situation would be beverage cups. Make sure that food guards are in place to protect food from sneezing or coughing. 
Immediately replace utensils that have been dropped, touched, or coughed on, and replace any food that has come into contact with those utensils. Again, monitor temperatures of foods in hot or cold holding. One important thing to remember when handling tableware is to avoid cross-contamination in the dining area. Avoid touching anything that will come into contact with the customer's mouth. Be sure to hold cups by the bottom or the handle, not the rim. Hold plates underneath or on the edges, not with fingers extending onto the rim. Hold utensils by the handle, not the eating end. Use a non-breakable utensil with a handle, not a cup or bowl, to scoop ice for water glasses. Use tongs to serve finger foods such as breads. Remember, do not reuse breads, sauces, and other unwrapped or prepared foods that have been served to customers. Single-service items are items meant to be thrown away after one use. They include styrofoam cups and plastic utensils that should be stored unopened off the floor. Wash your hands before unwrapping them and avoid touching surfaces that will come into contact with the customer's mouth.